First of all, uh, I want to thank the class of 2023 MDs, PhDs, and dual degree graduates for the honor of addressing you on this very important day of your lives. I have the awesome responsibility of providing you with wise and inspiring words, but with the comfort that you might not retain them for more than 24 hours. <laughs> First and foremost, we are here to celebrate your individual achievements. Each of you has demonstrated nearly superhuman self-discipline and made many sacrifices to prepare yourself for the very moment which marks the beginning of your professional career in the healing arts as physicians, as scientists, and as educators. This is also a time to give thanks to all of your loved ones. They also made sacrifices to help you achieve the goal of your life. And this is also a time for you to reflect on the great legacies of the Mount Sinai School of Medicine and the Mount Sinai Hospital, and to thank the extraordinary faculty of physicians and scientists who have taught you. In this unique day, for you graduates and for all of us present here, I wish to reflect on the concept of progress. I will do this by addressing first progress as a general concept, second, science, health, and education as pivotal contributors to progress, and third, your role, opportunity, and responsibility as unique personal contributor to progress. So first about the general concept of progress. The World Social Forum first held in Porto Alegre, Brazil, and in Barcelona, Spain in the early 2000s, defined progress as the orientation of the great technical advances towards collective social interests, such as the medical health systems, education, justice, and even politics. At present, and sadly, not new in the history of humanity, I would say that this concept of progress appears to be challenged by an ongoing abandonment of traditional ethical and moral values and the threat of radical groups to one of the most basic principles of human dignity, which is the right to live. Many of us, myself included, believe that new perspectives of progress can only be advanced by a youth with innovative training. We are referring to the younger generations, perhaps the key to the future, and to whom I am especially addressing this afternoon. Now, about science, health, and education as contributors to progress. Within this concept of progress, that is the orientation of the great technical advances towards collective social interest, two of the major challenges affecting science, health, and education that you are going to grapple with are first, a gap between technological and cognitive creativity, and second, a gap between treating disease and preventing it. Now, let's address the first gap, digital versus cognitive creativity. Large gaps are evolving in science and health at the interface of digital technologies with cognitive creativity. I am referring to the essential value of cognitive creativity as proposed by Maimonides and applied to science and to the suffering patient. In regard to science, in recent weeks, you will have likely followed extensive news coverage about what constitutes acceptable uses of AI technologies, such as the so-called chat GT, used to preparation of original research manuscripts, including software programs performing a statistical analysis of unsurveilled data. Young people, you, are generally those with the highest exposure to digital technologies, and as such, you are uniquely equipped for positive decision making. You have this responsibility, and it is up to you. You have the opportunity to shape science. In regard to health, although advanced technologies have become part of our daily lives as clinicians, to understand the human body, 
it is necessary to understand the mind. Students and young doctors need to realize that the, digita that the digitation of only body data can only be satisfactory and contributory to the well-being of the patient when integrated thoroughly with a complete clinical and social history and physical examination, a reality that is being diluted in medical educational systems that are mainly focused on digital technology. And here's the second gap, treating disease versus preventing it. We are going to face this. The most recent study by the US National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey projected that by 2060, compared with 2025, the number of people in the United States with diabetes will increase by, 20, by 39%, hypertension by 27%, high cholesterol by 27%, and obesity by 18%. Because of such significant challenges, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute has established human health as a top strategy priority for the future, shifting the focus on the importance of prevention, not just treatment. We have proposed with a group of young physicians and investigators, some of whom are here in the audience today, a strategy for sustaining health and preventing disease throughout a lifetime, which involves a targeted approach to three different age ranges. Early age, three to 10 years, intermediate age, 20 to 60 years, and advanced age, 60 to 100 years. Experts in neuroscience define the early years of life as those with the greater brain plasticity. What is learned and experienced at these ages lasts forever. So the hypothesis we are pursuing at present in about 50,000 children around the world is that by intervening in the early years of life, healthy lifestyles can be acquired and sustained in the long term. In other words, we believe that early education is critical for the prevention of cardiovascular and other diseases. One of the challenges in intermediate ages, 20 to 60 years, is to determine if individuals are already developing disease silently. By knowing this, we may have time to halt or reverse disease progression by focusing on healthier lifestyles. The, the upcoming automated imaging of three-dimensional ultrasound is simple, external, non-invasive, and inexpensive. It teaches us that very early, at the age of 20, arterial disease, the number one killer today, may begin to develop in a silent way. Another reason for early prevention. And in advanced age, 60 to 100 years, the importance is quality of life and nothing is of more concern than cognitive problems in old age. Recently, our group and others has observed that the same risk factors, and we are talking about untreated hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, etc., which affect, which affect the large arteries, as mentioned, also eventually affect the small cerebral arteries, contributing to senile dementia and possibly the acceleration of Alzheimer's disease. Another reason to take care of our health from a young age, rather than only focusing in treating disease later in life. Now, finally, most importantly, you as a contributor to progress. I believe that, most that the most compelling definition of personal success is that of a feeling fulfilled as a person being an active participant in progress. It is a state of contentment or inner peace, something close to happiness that I believe can occur in the context of three principles. The first principle is resilience. Adopt tenacity and persistence as a rule, despite the difficulties. Resilience is an Anglo-Saxon word that means, and I quote, possessing the ability to continuously overcome setbacks or barriers, close quotes. Keep in mind that to reach personal fulfillment is usually takes a long time of evolution and maturation, often marked by periods of frustration. The second principle is mentorship. Each of us is born with certain qualities or talents, 
But we often spend excessive energy pursuing ambitions for which we are not capable or ready. The message is to let your talent define your path. Look for tutors, look for mentors who can help you to discover your talent and pursue it. Each and every one of us need tutors, mentors, and advice. And the third principle, give to others and society. Once we accept the resilience and time necessary to mature and discover our natural talents with mentorship and advice, perhaps the most important step to reaching the maximum fulfillment or happiness was advocated by Aristotle 23 centuries ago in a quote, the good for others must be the end of all humanity's actions. And so the supreme end of humanity is fulfillment, close quotes. I would dare to say that generosity is and will always be the basis of happiness. Contributing to others and to society, giving time and empathy to the physical and psychological suffering of the patient. Contributing to health policy and our research into disease prevention, being a mentor to others, etc. Let me now conclude. Two thoughts about this important day for all of you, graduates, families, and friends. First of all, it is a great fortune that we belong to one of the most sacred, most generous, and most dedicated professions. The doctor comes into contact with the deepest layers of the human soul, the layers of suffering, of despair, of fear, of anxiety, the strongest and the weakest layers that make up the person. Layers that the doctor can help transform into light, hope, and optimism, often based on new knowledge, technological and therapeutic advances, but above all, on respect and love for patients. And the second thought, we may live with hectic daily lives. Let me paraphrase Josep Pla, a great Spanish writer, describing the sound of clocks in a watchmaker's shop. He says, and I quote, the impossible overlap, the impossible overlap of the tick-tocks, the confusion of the rhythms, the agitation of the asymmetrical pulsations, create a rush that makes you feel a sense of anguish." Close quotes. So I can imagine the delight that it would be a clock shop of a stop clocks. And if you like, turn upside down, because there is nothing that encourages calm more than a stop clock. In this special and unique day, please stop your clock and celebrate your achievement. And turn the clock back to give thanks to all of those that help you on this journey, in a sense, to make you ready to engage in progress. Thank you, and congratulations to all of you.